In this second video of the SAT Foundation's 10-part video series, uh, we're going to discuss, we're going to pick up where we left off in the first video, where we were discussing the five major factors that make uh, the SAT so different than any test you've taken in school, and probably any test you'll ever take, uh, at least for most people. Uh, and that fifth reason we left off with was guessing and scoring. So before we talk about guessing and scoring, we need to talk about, well, we need to talk about the scoring aspect of the story. Um, how is the SAT score? Well, let's look at a, you know, a usual regular test. A regular test you might take in school is scored as follows. If you get it right, you get, you know, plus one raw point. If you omit it, aka leave it blank, you just get zero, right? Which is what you'd expect. You don't get any credit for a blank answer. If you put something down and you get it wrong, you generally also get zero, right? You just, you didn't get it right. So the only time you get credit is if you get uh, a right answer. And we're talking about multiple choice questions here, so we're not talking about, you know, partial credit or anything like that. We're just talking about pure multiple choice tests. So if you get it right, you get a plus one. All other instances, you get a zero. How about the SAT? Well, on the SAT, if you get it right, you do get plus one raw point. That is the same as always. And if we look at that, uh, as we will be, as we look at the, the uh, scoring rubric, it's these raw points that tell you whether you get, you know, 800, 560, or whatever. If you omit it, aka leave it blank, you, as you'd expect, get zero, right? You get no credit. Now, the difference comes in here, and this is kind of the key difference. If you get it wrong, if you put an answer and don't put the right answer down, not only do you get no credit, which you might expect, but you actually get an extra minus one quarter or minus 0.25 raw points. Now think about that for a second. It sounds kind of mean when you think about it, and in some ways it is. Not only do you get no credit for getting it right, which of course is expected, but they actually will take away points that you've earned elsewhere. Now why do they do this? Why do they punish us? Why? Well, it's in some, some people call it the random guessing penalty. And it's put in place to prevent you from randomly guessing and getting points and uh, getting, a, getting a score based off that random guessing. Because remember, what they need to do is they need to sort. So how would they sort, for instance, if you look at this SAT conversion table? Let's look at the math section. Um, there are 54 questions in the math section. Each, we'll just simplify this a little bit, but each uh, question has five choices. So on average, if there are 54 questions, you're going to get about 10 right just by random guessing on average. Uh, so that will give you a raw score of, actually let's do the, the reading uh, because this is a little more accurate. So there's 67 reading questions, so there are five choices per reading question. So on average, we're gonna get about one-fifth of the points, right? Because we're gonna get one-fifth of the questions right just by random guessing because there are five choices. Well, in the reading section then, if there's 67 questions, that's about, what, 13 raw points? That means if you randomly guessed and there was no guessing penalty, you would get a 390 on average average guessing score. Now again, the problem is they had to sort, right? So how would they sort someone who tried and got 13 and someone who just randomly guessed and got 390? And now this is an issue, obviously no one is going to, or probably no one's going to randomly guess the entire test, but it's still an issue in other parts of the test where how do you figure out did people get their scores based off of their skills and their abilities or do they get the scores just by lucky guesses? And this is what this is meant to do. This minus one quarter is meant to correct for this random guessing, and let's see how. So let's go down here for a second and look at some sample questions here. So let's look at this block of five questions, A, B, C, D, E. Now let's say we just randomly guess, uh, I don't know, let's randomly guess uh, A, B, 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 and B. Now let's say the answers to the questions here were actually A, C, 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 and C. Now this is what's going to happen on average, right? On average, we're going to get one-fifth right, right? On average, we're going to get about one out of every five questions right. So this is just kind of the average case. All right, so here's one correct answer. Now normally on a regular test, you'd get plus one raw points for everything, right? But now we got these four wrong, minus a quarter, minus a quarter, minus a quarter, minus a quarter. We add up all these points and we get zero, which is what they want, right? They want you, if you randomly guess, to get a zero on the test because it shouldn't matter whether you guessed or not. That shouldn't affect how they sort you. And this is what they want, and this is where the minus one quarter comes in because this minus one quarters over the four questions you get wrong 
perfectly balance out this plus one lucky guess you get. All right, well, what now? What do we do uh, as a result of this? How do we kind of, uh, what do we do? Do we always guess? Do we never guess? You're going to get a lot of advice on this issue, but let me give you kind of my take on it. Um, so first things first, let's take a look at another group of five questions. This time, let's pretend that we can eliminate on each of these five questions, we can process of elimination, eliminate three of the five choices. So we're just left with two. Well, let's go ahead and uh, lay down our guesses. A, B, A, B, A. Uh, and let's say this time we get somewhat lucky. I mean, usually you'd expect with a two choice you to get about half right, right? It's a coin flip. So, but let's say this time we just get two out of the two out of the five. Uh, as you'll see, it's not going to matter. So. This is A, C, A, D, D. So for this one and this one, we get plus one. Now what happens with the other three? We get a minus a quarter here, minus a quarter here, minus a quarter here. So what is our total points? Well, we have plus two, minus three quarters. That's plus one and a quarter points for randomly guessing between these two. So in this case, guessing worked out perfectly for us. We actually ended up, on average, gaining points by guessing. Now, why was this? Because we eliminated choices. We, we took a 1 out of 5 guess to a 1 out of 2 guess. And this minus 1 quarter is not going to be enough to balance out. Um, it's not going to be enough to balance out the guessing, the points you'll get from guessing when you're only down to 2. And the same thing's going to happen if you can eliminate 3, or you can eliminate only 2. So let's go ahead and go. We get rid of D and E. And let's say we guess A for all of them. And then it turns out that, uh, let's see, we have three, so we're probably going to get about, let's say we get one, let's say we get two right here. Now on average, with three, we're going to get one third right, but bear with me. So we're going to get plus one, plus one, minus a quarter, minus, again, this is the same as last time, essentially. We're going to get plus one and a quarter. Now it doesn't work out perfectly, because we really should have done it with six, just so we could have had an even number, because... You really can't take one third of five. We get the point, right? By eliminating these choices, we lower the number of choices we have to pick from, and thus increase our chances of getting a plus one. So that means the minus one quarter, which before was so devastating, isn't as bad. And actually, in theory, if you look at the math, uh, you can actually get gain points by guessing even when you've got down to four, just by getting rid of one. Uh, in general, though, uh, what's the strategy going to be here? The strategy is going to be guess when you can eliminate two or three choices. So that means guess when it's a one out of two chance or one out of three chance. If it's one out of four, don't guess. Uh, even though technically it's mathematically okay, just it's just a little aggressive. If you have no idea, if you can't even eliminate anything, then you're going to want to omit, leave blank. Never take a one out of five guess because it's not going to really help you. In fact, I mean, in theory, on average, it's going to um, even out. But as we'll talk about in a little bit, actually, most of the time, it's going to hurt you to blindly guess. And that's because you're going to be falling into particular traps that they're going to lay for you. This actually also is the case with these guys. Now, when you do guess, when you're down to your two or three, this is where it gets a little sketchy. In theory, this math works out if uh, you're making a random guess here. Now, if you're choosing between A and B and you pick A, or B because it looks good to you, you might be falling into a trap. So this is kind of where it gets a little bit sketchy. Now, I don't want to say don't guess on these because you really should be, as I said below, but you've got to be very careful. I'd actually recommend, this is something that not many other people have said, but if you're down to two or three, make it a totally random guess. Don't try, if, if, you, if you're not sure about the question, steer away from the educated guesses. So if it's a one out of two, you know, flip a coin or use some way of randomizing this guess. Make some way of randomizing this guess so that when you pick A, B, or C, or A, or B, you're not picking it because of what the question says, what the answer says, but you're picking it because it's random. If you do that, you will get this benefit. The problem is if you're stuck between A, B, and C, for instance, and you pick C because you think it looks good, you could have just fallen into a trap. So that's why you have to be very, very careful about this guessing strategy. Uh, most people will tell you just to guess and not tell you this part, but I'm giving you this other extra hint. So you're going to want to guess randomly. Okay? Now, 
that was the end of the guessing strategy. On the next video, we'll start talking about some of the sections of the test. We're actually going to talk about the math section first. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please rate, comment, and subscribe to the channel. There'll be plenty more SAT videos to come. If you'd like more SAT tips or information or to learn more about me, go check out my website, which is reasonprep.com. All right, let's check out the next video.